I I prayer this this sort of we we see prayer or praying nowadays sort of akin to like a immediate manifestation so people pray or at least that's it's often reduced to I wish I had such and such and I'm not going to dismiss yeah. that maybe yeah. there is something right. to do that but what I think you can with certainty say is that having every single one of us has a conscience and opening up and creating a dialogue with that conscience is one of the most important things I think anyone can do and you can call it maybe it's yeah. uh, there's different names for it there's intuition there's but I all think they all root they all stem from possibly the same thing which is this conscience that speaks to us and maybe that conscience is the voice of God or something like that what do you how was your conscience you know one of the reasons why the podcast is called the breaking point podcast because this is literally the line that I would say at the end of the podcast but I'm interested in people's sort of lowest or highest moments because people can also learn great things from being at the top of the mountain as they looking down as they can from being at the bottom of the mountain but when everything fails in life and everything crumbles around you relationships family all you have left is that daemon spirit i think if you can't if you can't trust yeah. anyone and it's one of the reasons why you can't lie is because every time you lie or you shouldn't lie you fracture that relationship between you and the and, mm-hmm. and your conscience and what that means is that you don't know where you are because you're surrounded by lies and they cloud your vision and worse than that yep. you're not on stable ground to build yourself back up again so what does your conscience tell you what has it told you yeah it's and, and uh you know when someone becomes a christian right they accept christ into their life they have the holy spirit and the holy spirit gives them th- that conviction to do what is right so that there's a scripture in the bible where it says um you know i'm going to put my my laws into their hearts and my people will know my laws right so what what does that mean exactly because before in the old testament you had the people they had to they had a um the law of moses to look at right and they had to do all these sacrifices all these steps um and or, in order to be you know have a right relationship with god but um what the whole gospel is about is that you know jesus had come down um in the form of the man right god had come down in the form of man and he had lived a sinless life and uh he died in for our sins and then he he resurrected given us new life if we believe that he was the son of god that he died he died for our sins so by doing that when he ascended back up to heaven he said i'm going to give you my the helper and the helper is the holy spirit and that's what gives us that conscience like to be okay this is the right thing to do this is the wrong thing and if we do something and we feel convicted in our heart like i don't know if that is you know I, i'm not too sure like what to do but there's just something inside me that's just telling me to go in this direction or like there's this burden on my heart to go in this direction. And then when you do that, you stop having that conflict and you're like, okay, this is... And then, like I said before, doors just start opening like crazy. Like all these opportunities just come your way. You're not even trying. They're just happening. Um, and it's it's wild uh, when you delve deep into it and, um, you know, you, you, you go into... Um, you really think about it it's it's pretty it's pretty wild but it's it's amazing and like I, I like i said before you know what i tell people you know what we see in life is not everything there is to life like some people are they're so broken hearted about a relationship that's all they think about all they think about is like what had happened what that person had done to them and they they identify themselves their whole life to that one situation um and there's just way more and if you actually tap into it you discover that and your eyes become open to it. And it's the whole, there's a whole realm of possibilities there for someone to just grab if they want. Yeah. Well, look, look, we'll get back onto that. Cause I like, I like that. Um, Jordan Peterson, yeah. who I'm sure you're probably aware of who I talk about at least yeah. every other podcast now, he said, <laughs> literally, 
and maybe he did well no he did say it but i'm not attributing the, the idea to him but yeah. He, as Carman said a lot, that the the adventure of your life is to be had in telling the truth, um, mm-hmm. because you don't know what's gonna what, what's gonna happen. But the only thing you can rely on is the fact that, and it's a hard one, isn't it? Because what is your what is your truth? Because sometimes we don't know; we're just ignorant. And therefore, are we lying? Are we telling the truth? So there are, there's always caveats to these things, but more often than not, I think what he says, there's one of the rules in his book is tell the truth or at least don't lie. And I think that second bit is really key. Mm-hmm. At least don't lie. Because yeah. you know when you're lying, you, you it's it's obvious, right. you know, this is a lie. I'm saying this. It's, it's, a, conscious, lie. it's a conscious decision. But you can't always mm-hmm. know what truth is, as as I just said. And yeah. yeah, and you, I think you said something about being weighed down. And I've spoken about this before on a podcast. Isn't it interesting how we attribute these physical sort of sensations to this, in theory, abstract idea? Like, how can yeah. how can something be weighing you? It's the same when we talk about light. It's like I'm having a dark time. Why? Do, why in the world? Do yeah, people, I'm having a dark period. What? What does that mean? But we just we just all say it and we don't question it because I mean part of the reason is because our brains are very vi- are very visually orientated, and light. If we can't see what's over there, then there could be anything over there. So it's all it's, there's all that connection. But the 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 key right. that right. that's sort of a little tangent the, the key thing that i find interesting is the whole heaviness because it is when i when when my conscience is weighing me down i literally just did it there weighing me down you feel heavy yeah. <laughs> literally yeah it's like a sort of it's an existential bloating you feel existentially bloated mm-hmm. or compressed and it's a tangible sensation at least for most people well I I think something about me, I was thinking about this the other day, I probably have quite a sensitive conscience to other people, maybe I think, looking back at my childhood, maybe that's quite a yeah. key characteristic. But the people that don't have consciences are the narcissists and the psychopaths. So if you work back from there, then you know that conscience is clearly a good thing if these de- at least possibly deplorable people don't have something, yeah. then what it ever is that they don't have must be a good and must be a was it must be a positive and therefore yes so does the bible say anything about what i just spoke about the whole way why do you why do you think we say i feel weighed down or or yeah i think it just comes down to uh i think it just comes down to like your your calling um your destiny like if you like you have yeah you have plans for yourself but god has a plan for you and if you're you know you're constantly walking in that direction where you're listening to you know the holy spirit tell you what to do um and and then you make a decision that it's like it's not contrary to god's plan for you you're gonna have that that weight on you like oh man like i'm not i'm not doing what i i should be doing like I, i gotta be doing more you know and you have this constant uh battle within yourself and uh yeah. you know uh one day i'll have like a video uh, where i you know interview my parents and you know tell them they can tell from a, a third party um extension rather than like a first hand and they can tell you like that's what that's all i thought about was like man i could i know i can do more like i there's something that like i know how to i know what i need to do but i don't have i don't have uh the roadmap to it it's like it's kind of like you you're at you're in a tunnel and you see the light at the end of the tunnel but it's very it's very small and you just need that lamp on your feet to you know make sure you don't fall into a ditch or you don't fall into a puddle and it just keep you at, in that right direction as as you get you know more more and more and uh you know further down the tunnel then that light becomes bigger and bigger and you can see the picture you can see the the end result and i think that's what really um what it boils down to is just making sure that um you listen to that conviction and because a lot of times we, we we like to doubt ourselves and we get into this um mental debate with ourselves and then that that 
I think that right there uh, hurts a lot of people. I think our we us we get in the way of it, um, and we're like we're like oh well it's too hard or like I don't want to learn that, um, and then we think you know we start thinking of our dreams and we're just like oh you know it'd be nice but then we don't want to commit to all the work to get to it so then we just stay the same you know so um so yeah that that's what i think about that yeah just the bit you said right at the end though i thought was interesting because i i think i know why not i know I, i'm sure any other people have spoken about it but you might ask yourself so why people don't try why do you if someone some because one day not one day but Sometimes in life you speak to someone that's got a problem and you know what the solution is and me, maybe even they know what the solution is, but they don't do it. Yeah. Now, there's so many yeah. reasons why they won't do it. But I think one of the reasons is is because when you don't try in life, your unconscious or your subconscious or a part of your brain can always go, oh, this is so annoying, but we're not actually trying, so it doesn't we can kind of feel this way and it's sort of what's the word it, it validates no that's not the right word it's okay i'll carry on and then it will make sense looking back but if you try in life and then something goes wrong and then it still doesn't work out then your brain then you've put yourself in a situation where you're like i did everything i was supposed to do you don't have that cop out where you can say someone that isn't trying can say, yeah, but you're not really trying. So maybe no wonder things don't work out because you're not trying. If you do try and then things are hard, that's thing, but that can be an incredibly disheartening feeling that, um, yeah. And, and I think, and that's possibly where God, well, in, in very, very dark times, that's where, the idea of God can come in because if you if you're disheartened by something, then well, you need faith, don't you? Do you think we need faith? Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, I you need faith. I mean, that is the foundation of everything. I, if you don't have faith and you don't believe, forget it. You might as well not even try. That's as good as not trying if you don't have faith or believe in it. Because then you're just going through the motions. But if you're if you have faith in something no, like and you you believe like no matter what like everything's gonna work out for the benefit of whatever I'm doing, then there's nothing stopping you. I mean, there's literally literally nothing stopping you at all because um, I, I I always love it when like some type of obstacle comes my way or some type of or I, I fail or uh, there's just something that's like really hard for me to figure out because I know. All that is is just a test. There's all every single situation we, we deal in life, it's a test whether or not we're gonna do the right thing or the wrong thing. And I love that because then I just I get to I get to prove to myself like am I really who I say I am? You know? Cause if I if I if I recognize that it is a test and in order to um and when you recognize it's a test, well you want to pass it, right? So you, you make the right decision on it and then that all that does is just propel you and just keep propelling you to to more success um and uh the bigger the gold the bigger the treasure no sorry yeah. the bigger the dragon the bigger the treasure yeah 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 i want it so hard that i reap all the rewards and absolutely it. and uh it's <laughs> i'll be honest it's not fun all the time it really isn't no. um but i know that once i get through it there's going to be something that's awesome on the other side of it um, maybe even bigger than what I've expected, and hey, I'll I'll take it, <laughs> I'll take it all day. Uh, um, what else are you gonna do? Like, but yeah, it, it, yeah, right. And you know what? Uh, I was always afraid of taking risk, and this year I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm I'm taking all the risk. I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna do so many, so so much, not reckless, but calculated risk. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just been paying off like one after the other after the other. And because I always, I always believed I could do it. It was just taking that, taking that step of faith, taking that risk. And it's scary. Don't get me wrong. It's very, it's scary at first. Like it really is. Um, I was like, man, if this doesn't work out, I, I don't, I don't know. But, but I believed that I could, I could do it and I could get through it. 
and um I, I was capable of it absolutely yeah i mean i mean and look at how much it's paid off i mean i can't believe you started that account a couple of months yeah. ago and you've already got the amount of followers that's that's fucking nuts if you could send some of that energy yeah. my way that would be really appreciated um <laughs> but but it, it, but you say it's scary but it, and you are obviously it's scary but it, it's a good it's a good scary isn't it it's like right right it's the it's the scary that you get when you watch like a horror movie or where yeah you, it's that sort of i don't want to look but i want to look sort of yeah scary it's a it's, it's a thrilling scary and and we, we we like we like to be scared in a thrillful manner um in a sort of it makes thrilling. life exciting yeah exactly <laughs> there is a, it makes life exciting and what it also tells you is yeah. that the human we are very interesting complicated beings but as much as we're hardwired yeah you can say that again yeah as much as we're hardwired <laughs> to avoid things that scare us we're also drawn towards them as well like i remember growing up i was scared of et really scared of et i don't really know why i think it was the opening scene spielberg did such a good job in the way that he directed the opening scene because it it just is sort of a bit freaky and sort of the way that he's in the woods and the the the, the guys the the government hunting him anyway and in in our house we have like a, a basement which is kind of just like it's like one room not like in america you guys have a whole bloody house in a basement we just have one little room and that was like the okay. our playroom um me and my brother growing up i remember one day I must have literally gone down in the basement, put E.T. on on DVD, sort of shielding my eyes so that I didn't see it. And then I went upstairs. And I was literally just... Because it, there's a thing in um, CBT called systematic desensitization. It's like a tactic that you use mm -hmm. on people that have got a phobia or something. So you slowly expose them to what they're afraid of to... Um, decrease their fear the other the the other commonly used one is something yeah. called flooding which as you can imagine is like someone's scared of heights you put them on the top of a tower and go you're not leaving for half an hour good luck buddy adios and then you fuck yeah. off <laughs> and they're stuck there but <laughs> looking back now my like six-year-old self wanted to expose myself maybe a bit older but probably not actually about that wanted to expose myself to watching something it was afraid of. It knew that in a controlled environment, with me, the earnest being on me, I was in the I was in the the drive the pilot, the driver's seat, and it went, We're gonna I mean, I don't think I ended up watching it, but just putting it on in the background. Yeah. Not in the background. Just putting it on I don't know, that's quite a sophisticated thing for a little six year old to do. And I think yeah. we all have that in us. We all can do that. And we probably it's probably something that we forget as we get older, actually. That ability to just put a foot out and then come back and then put another foot out and then come back. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so I don't know why I started talking about E.T., but there we, there we are. It was good, though. I... Yeah, no, it is a good Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I'm not scared of it yeah. now, so, you know, that's good. <laughs> it is a crack. Yeah, literally, it's, it's, a, it's a great film. No, it's like, uh, it's like going to the beach and, you know, you, you, uh, the water's a little bit cold, right? Absolutely. And you're gonna, you start off with your feet and then you slowly walk in and then eventually you're in the water and it's, it's a little bit freezing at first, but then you get used to it and now you're like telling everybody else to come in the water and you're having a ball, right? So I, I think it's the same way in life, um, where it's more so i think curiosity uh really good word it gets on us and we're just like man the the possibility of what if and um i rather try something out given my all and fail rather than rather than thinking man what if i really went in on this like it could have changed my whole entire life it could have changed my whole family's life mm -hmm. right and i did i could not live with that at all i, I couldn't live with that so i i just needed to go all in, full commitment, no matter what. Like, I don't care. It, it has to get done. The work has to get done. And um, I think, too, uh, I don't know if everybody else is like this, but 
I always need to constantly have uh, some type of pr progression uh, going my way. Like I have to have progression. I don't, I don't necessarily get joy in getting the goal. Uh, it's more so like if I just see myself progressing, constantly progressing, then I, I'm happy. But if I'm staying stagnant or if I feel like uh, I'm getting comfortable, too comfortable, that's when I get unhappy and I get I get mad with myself uh, for getting too comfortable. Like I should always be, I think I, I, I should always be innovating. I should always be trying out new things and um, constantly like looking forward to to the future. Like, yeah, you, you, you um, have confidence from your past successes, but you don't live in the past. You should be present and then looking forward to the future. Oh, my God.